Welcome everyone to this edition of the Vastari Connects webinar. We are joined today by Anna Lowe from Smartify, and it's really great to be chatting with her today about solving problems with a digital partner. Um, this is a talk that is uh, part of our web series called Keep Calm and Carry On. The goal of this series is to talk about some of the things that continue to inspire us in, in this difficult time for museums and culture and art. Um, and so we thought that some of the work that Smartify has been doing in 2020 and also what they're planning to do in 2021, is quite inspiring. So I'm really grateful for Anna finding the time to meet us today. We also have a few more talks that will be happening in this series. Um, if you go to vastari.com and check out the banner, you can then see the other talks that will be happening every two weeks. And we're about to announce a new one that will be coming up. So uh, keep your eye on there and see if, you, if it's a topic that will be interesting to you. So uh, to start out, I guess, um, Anna, would you like to just tell us a little bit about the Smartify story? How did it start? Where did it start? The inspiration. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Bandine. And hi, it's really good to see everybody uh, on, on the uh, the chat today. Um, so yeah, my background is actually in museum education. Um, and so I started out working in museum education departments and also in kind of community program and programming and learning. And um, kind of I had that, that feeling of being in a museum and wishing that, you know, all of the kind of extra stories that, that you get when you're with curators or with kind of in a, in a group that you could kind of easily access that and really kind of felt that the existing audio guides that all the museums had back in 2015 were kind of you know, they, they didn't give you that real interesting visitor experience, but also you couldn't take the information home with you. So you had this rented thing that you had to give back and it's a kind of clunky device when, you know, we all had smartphones. And, you know, also kind of from looking more, more broadly, that the idea that, you know, uh, if you kind of think about Spotify or Netflix, or all of these other cultural services where you have things that are personalized and they're on demand and, you know, all of those kind of amazing things and, and that it's actually targeted to you. Um, none of that obviously exists in our sector. And also every museum had a different, you know, whether it was a different audio guide or a different app. So all of that kind of these things and um, my co-founders kind of had the same thoughts. So we started Smartify really to be that kind of single platform that could offer that sort of single experience for getting information about uh, culture and art when visiting museums, um, but that you would be able to take it with you. It would be a free app. Um, and that was really our mission. And we started Smartify as a social enterprise. It's still a social enterprise. Um, and our goal is to make the information about art and culture accessible to everybody and also to support the financial resilience and audience reach of museums. Um, we're a UK based company, although half of our team is also in Amsterdam. So we kind of split our time between um, those two locations. I guess it might be helpful just to play the short video, which I also put on the chat at the top, but it might be helpful to play that now just to give people a sense of like what Smartify is and what I guess we're known for specifically. Um, so if you can see there, um, it's slightly laggy, but you can see basically that scanning technology. So that's something that Smart was always built into the idea of DNA of Smartify. When we were developing the app in 2016, um, you know, image recognition had really come on leaps and bounds, and we, we knew that we wanted to use the phone of the camera to identify objects. And it will identify paintings, but also 3D objects, so like sculptures and, you know, all sorts of items. So we work with not just art museums, but also social history, science museums, maritime museums. We have all sorts of different partners. Um, and you know the idea is obviously that it's just the most kind of simple way to get information. So, so that's kind of the key to kind of what we do. Um, yeah, I'll pause there, I guess. I think that's brilliant. And just to get a bit of an idea of the timeline of this. So you were working in education at museums. The idea kind of started when, when did you, I know you were working in the background for a little while before actually launching it. How, how did that come about? 
Yeah, we wanted to obviously make sure that because it's a user-facing app, so it's a free app on the app stores, and we wanted to make sure that when we launched, we had a number of museums already, their collections loaded. So we were kind of already looking at open data collections, but also working with our first partners. So people like National Gallery in London, the Wallace Collection, a few other museums that really kind of said, actually, this is really cool and we like what you're doing. So we're going to load up our collections. Um, so that we kind of launched publicly at the end of 2017 with about 30 partners. And we now work with about 160 museums, as I said, all over the world. So UK, US, across Europe. Um, yeah.